Welcome to Scott Plays, and uh, tonight I'm playing Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Let's get set up. Okay, the, the game is now all set up. Um, started the, the setup by putting the board out, placing door markers on all of the door, uh, interior door indicators. There are also on this board four exterior doors. Um, the exterior doors are permanently open. The interior doors are start off closed um, and we will be able to open them and by flipping the token over um, they can also be destroyed and at that point the, the token is removed from the board and we get this two cube symbol showing um, I will explain what that means in a moment um, I then um, seeded the board with three initial explosions. Um, the um, game comes with a, a marker in one of the expansions for explosions. Um, this is not included with the base game, if I remember rightly, um, but I pretty much use it all the time. It's very useful for placing down where there's an explosion so that as you there are there are a number of steps you have to go through when processing an explosion and it's necessary to remember what the, the source of the explosion was. Um, so you saw me placing that, then placing these fire markers out. Um, I also placed hot spots. Um, I will explain how spots work when I come to explain the turn structure. Um, I then placed uh, hazmat tokens out. These are um, materials in the home that may explode um, and there are at the level I'm playing on um, which I, I chose earlier in the setup um, is the veteran difficulty level. Um, this um, sets the board up with three initial explosions, four hazmat tokens. Um, there is also recruit level, which would be three explosions and three hazmats, and a heroic. Um, difficulty level which is four initial explosions and five hazmats um, so as you can imagine heroic is particularly difficult I quite enjoy veteran difficulty level it's 
hard, but not ridiculously hard. Um, so yeah, placed the hazmats. I then placed um, three of these uh, point of interest uh, markers. The game comes with, if I remember rightly, um, 18 point of interest markers. Six of them have blank faces um, on the underside. Uh, the other 12 have um, a picture of a, a victim on. Um, they, there are, there's a cat and a dog and the rest are all people. Um, during setup you remove one of the blank markers and two of the victims. You then shuffle them all together and then place three out on the board face down. Um, so you don't know what a, you know where the points of interest are but you don't know what is there until you get there and it may be a, a false alarm. Um, the, during the game we will always have three points of interest out um, or well three points of, uh, three of, of these markers out whether they're flip to the victim side or face down as points of interest. Um, as soon as you uh, rescue a, a victim then at the end of that uh, turn you place another point of interest out. Okay, after that um, I then, uh, in fact, I think I did this before, but during the, the correct way you want to do it is then you select your um, specialist roles. Um, I, when I'm playing solo, I like to do it random, um, and I will usually play with two, three, or sometimes even four uh, specialists. Um, this game, as you can see, I'm playing three. Um, I randomly ended up with the hazmat technician, the CAPS firefighter, and the fire captain. Um, I'll talk a little, little bit more about those when I actually start playing. Um, you then place out more hotspot markers. Um, again, according to the difficulty level, and the number of specialists you're using. Um, we then have another six uh, hot spots. Um, if we were playing heroic there would actually be 12. Um, and similarly if we were playing with more specialists there would be more out on the board already. Um, and then the final thing to do um, is to decide where we place the fire engine and the ambulance. Now looking at the board um, we've got quite a bit of fire around here um, and so I think I will start with the fire engine over here. Why I'm doing that will become clear as I start playing and most of the victims are over here, so I'm going to put the ambulance in this space. Um, the fire engine and the ambulance are always in designated spaces, um, and you can move them during the game, and they, they will move from one to another. Um, so, turn structure. Um, the way you play is you uh, start your turn with a taking a number of actions according to your role. Um, I will 
start with the hazmat technician and then move to the caps firefighter and fire captain and then we'll cycle um, at the end of your turn you roll the dice and this determines where the fire will spread and at that point I will explain how fire spreads what these black cubes mean and how the hotspots work um, as you can imagine um, if fire spreads onto hazmats that's bad if fire spreads onto points of interest that's potentially bad if it's a victim um, if a firefighter is in a space that uh, fire spreads to again that's bad so I will start with the hazmat technician um, the, at the beginning of the game you can choose to place your uh, firefighter in any of the spaces on the outside of the board um, I'm thinking because we have two hazmats here that are easy to get to um, that's it's a good idea to start over there by this open door and I will take four actions um, which I will indicate with these uh, action markers um, so the things you can do on your turn are movement moving into a space is one action so that costs me one action I'll then move again it costs me another action now a normal firefighter could pick up the hazmat and then carry it with them um, if they were doing that it would cost them two action points to move one square rather than one the hazmat technician however has a special ability called dispose he just spends two action points and removes the hazmat from the board and it's that simple um, and so we've well, used all four actions so the hazmat technician's turn ends and as I said we roll the dice so the red die indicates the row on the board that the fire is spread into the black die indicates the column now this is pretty bad because we have row 2 column 1 and as you can see there is fire already in that space there is also a hotspot marker so I will let's go, go through this one step at a time when fire spreads to a place that is already on fire we get an explosion the way explosions work is you look at the four adjacent spaces um, and if the space is empty then you place a fire marker if it has fire in it then you move to the next adjacent space in the same direction this one is empty so we place a fire marker there now let's take this direction again we move to the next space and we get another fire uh, strictly speaking I should be placing them this way up the, the fire markers have fire on one side smoke on the other and you always place smoke initially um, you'll see why I place them as fire um, shortly um, this is something I normally do as a shortcut when I'm playing and so I did it automatically uh, so let's take this direction now now between this space and this space is a wall when an explosion hits a wall we get a damage cube placed if we ever run out of these damage cubes then the game ends the building collapses 
and the game is over. Now, in this direction, we have again a wall, and we also already have a damage cube. Now, normal wall sections um, can take two damage cubes um, before they become a hole. So now that this has two on it, it basically the wall there doesn't exist. If we get a uh, another explosion on this same space and there's still fire there, then we would place a fire marker on the outside, on the um, smoke side. Uh, we then process the hot spot. Um, what these mean um, is you roll again. So any time you roll a space that has a hot spot, you uh, spread the fire according to whether there's fire there or um, create an explosion or whatever needs doing in that spot. Then you re-roll the dice and you do the same again. Now, if you get another space with a hot spot, you do it all, roll again, and you carry on until you end up with a space that doesn't have a hot spot on it, uh, such as this one. You then place, so in this instance, um, the space isn't on fire, so it just gets smoke. But because we rolled the die um, because of a hotspot to go there, we take one of these extra hotspot markers and place it there. So as you can imagine, the more that happens, the more likely it's going to happen, the faster the fire spreads. After we've finished doing all that, any smoke markers, and this is why I placed fire there, um, automatically, um, that any smoke markers that are next to fire turn to fire. Um, this one's okay because it's not next to a fire. A hot spot is not fire. It's just a an area that means that the uh, fire is more likely to spread. Um, here's the best way to explain it. Uh, after we've done that, we then check to see how many points of interest or victims are on the board. There's still three, so we don't need to do anything. If there were less than three, then we'd re-roll the dice and we'd put a, another one out. Um, if that uh, results in a space with fire, then um, there are little indicators on the, the board. Um, these are probably the easiest ones to see, the yellow ones. Uh, and basically you follow the arrow to find a space that doesn't have fire in and then that's where you place your uh, point of interest. So that completes the first turn of the game. Um, the Captain Firefighter now has a turn. His special ability is Extinguishing Fire. Um, the base game um, comes with these green action point indicators. Um, one of the expansion expansions also includes um, additional action point indicators for the specialists. Um, they also, it also includes uh, some tokens that replace these green ones, but I tend to still use the green ones. Um, the, so yeah, the Cass Firefighter has three basic actions and three free extinguish actions. So these are action points that he can only use use uh, to fight fire. Um, so as you, as you can imagine he is particularly good at putting out fire and 
I will um, explain how that works in a moment as I play his turn. Um, again, I can choose where he starts. Um, there are sort of two obvious starting points, either here or over here. Um, in this situation, um, another one that is not so obvious is over here. Um, the reason that could be a good starting place is we have these two um, hazmats. Um, if fire ever spreads to uh, hazardous material space, it explodes. And so, um, because we've got a fire close to these, there's a high chance of getting an explosion that spreads to the space with the hazmat, which causes an explosion, which spreads fire even further and causes more damage and destroys doors and all sorts. Um, now, the fourth place that he could start was where the hazmat technician starts started. Um, I don't think that's a, the best place for him to start. Uh, I am either going to go one of these two or this one. Thinking about the way things are set up. It's, it's difficult um, because there's clearly a lot of fire over here but there's also quite a lot of fire here however the reason I placed the um, fire engine here and the ambulance here is that the fire engine can put out quite a large amount of fire fairly quickly and that's what I plan to do with the fire captain um, and so I think I will start the cast firefighter here so the way firefighting works is you can spend one action point to turn fire into smoke so I shall do that initially um, the here there's a door open and you can always do it either in a, a neighbouring space or the space you're on so he could walk onto there however uh, moving onto a, a space with fire costs two action points so it's better to turn the uh, space to smoke and then either move or extinguish it fully so let's start by turning it to smoke we'll use one of the free uh, extinguish action points to do that then use a second one to extinguish it completely we will then use a normal action space to move then I think I will use free extinguish to turn this to smoke now smoke by itself um, unless we roll that space it will not just turn back into fire um, it has to have either fire next to it or for you to roll the space that has a smoke in for it to turn to fire so we're fairly safe leaving that a smoke and then use the, the remaining two action points to fully extinguish this so smoke and then removed that's his turn so roll the dice again and we get row four column seven so that's here. Now this is empty, so it will become a smoke. And we move on to the fire captain. Fire captain gets 
two free command action points and four basic action points and he has a special ability of command on your turn you may spend AP to move other players um, AP being action points action points spent this way are at the normal movement cost of the player being moved okay so first let's decide where he's going to start I think the place for him to start is on the fire engine now when you're on the on either the fire engine or the ambulance you're not occupying either of the two spaces but rather are can be on either of them so if you wanted to leave the the fire engine you either move to there or there it's not that you're on this half of the fire engine or this half you're just on the fire engine now the reason I just stop there is with the uh, fire engine you have a special ability that um, is firing the deck gun um, that is expensive unless you have one of the um, other roles um, but it's very useful the way it works and I will illustrate uh, demonstrate this because this is what I intend to do uh, is you spend four action points you then take the dice and you roll them now the deck gun fires into one quadrant of the building so in this position it fires between column 5 and 8 and row 1 and 3 so you check the, the number that you rolled any dice that are outside of the quadrant that it fires into you flip over so what we have here is five and four so row five column four which is way outside of the quadrant so we need to flip both dice so the five becomes a two the four becomes a seven now this indicates the square that the deck gun hits so that's this one it automatically extinguishes any fire from fire to completely out in that space and every neighboring space that isn't blocked by a wall so in this case it's this space this space and this one so this fire is also extinguished now as I said the fire captain can move other players um, which I will do now I will use one of his free command AP to move him and the other one to move the CAFS firefighter so they're in position ready for their next turn now note that moving the CAFS firefighter here is a slightly risky uh, thing to do um, because he's next to fire um, if fire ever spreads to a place where there is a firefighter um, that's pretty bad um, the firefighter is not down um, he, he moves to the nearest ambulance and then starts his turn there um, no, there isn't any other penalty apart from that but it normally means that he that, that firefighter is 
um, away from where they want to be or where they need to be um, so yeah it's not something you want to happen but this game is all about taking risks um, so in this instance I will take the risk of moving in here mainly because there isn't at the moment that much fire on the board but anyway end of the fire captain's turn we roll the dice again so column three row two it's empty so it gets smoke there's no hot spot so we don't roll again we then turn smoke into fire because it's next to fire now diagonals don't matter um, but if we had had a, say another smoke here then that would have also flipped and then that would have flipped and you, you keep checking and flipping smoke to fire until there's no more smoke next to fire ok completed the fire captain's turn on to the hazmat technician again right he's on a space with hazmat so we might as well dispose of that two action points get rid of it now um, need him to start moving towards other hazmat so I'll spend two action points to move here and then here that's his turn done let's see what happens with the fire so row six column two smoke onto the cast firefighter uh, my plan here is to extinguish as much fire as I can um, I think I will start by fully extinguishing that space fully extinguishing that space and then I will save my two action points so the way I will indicate that is I'll put two more out so the next turn I have five basic actions and three free actions the uh, free actions so in the case of the cast firefighter the extinguish actions and in the case of the captain the command actions they can't be saved um, but otherwise for most characters um, and I think yeah for all the characters in the base game you can save as many action points as their um, starting AP um, now on their next on his next turn when we spend these two they will go away so he won't end up with uh, more action points after that um, but I'll bring these back in so I can reach them more easily um, so yeah that's his turn turn we spread the fire again so row one column seven row one column seven it's there okay we've got a hot spot it's going to start a uh, smoke we need to roll again and we get row six column six that is smoke and because it was a result of a hot spot we get another hot spot then turn smoke to fire and move on to the fire captain okay I think what I now want to do with him because 
I mean, there's very limited space for him to use the, the deck gun that will be of use. Um, there's really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of twelve spaces. Uh, I suppose that's better than a fifty percent chance. So yeah, let's actually let's start by using the deck gun again. Okay. I, I was thinking of actually taking him off the fire engine or possibly moving the fire engine, um, but we'll I'll talk about moving uh, later. Uh, but yeah, let's fire the deck gun. So column five. Uh, sorry, row five, column five. Um, column five is within uh, the right half of the board. Uh, row five, however, isn't. So we only flip that, which ends up in this space. Which, unfortunately, means that one was wasted because the water doesn't go through the wall, even though it's got a crack on it. Um, there's no fire here, no fire here, and this um, space was a door, but during the setup there was an explosion here, and that destroyed the door. Um, I'll go over the way that works if it happens during the game. Um, and so this is now a completely open, missing door, so the fire, the water can splash over to here, but there's no fire there. So yeah, unfortunately that was completely wasted <laughs> uh, for action points. Um, but what we can do is spend his two command action points. And in this instance, I think one of them will be to get the hazmat technician to open that door. It's going to save him an action on his next turn and the second one will be to move the cast firefighter again. Um, basically with the fire captain I want to be moving the cast firefighter as often as possible, getting him as close as I can to fire um, without putting him in too much danger. Okay so that's all his actions done. Really roll for fire. Uh, row three, column seven. Uh, empty space. So it gets smoke. Now, as you can see, smoke is building up here. So I want to try and get that under control. Um, and it will be particularly bad if this hazmat blows up. Um, So, Hazmat Technician gets its four action points back and we decide what we want to do with them. Let's start by spending one action to move into this kitchen area. When you move into a space with the point of interest in, you flip it over to see what it is. It's blank. That was a false alarm. Now, as I think I mentioned earlier, we will replace that at the end of his turn. Um, the, uh, now, at this point, probably the best thing for him to do is to extinguish Smoke's Fire. So you'll spend two to fully extinguish that. And then he might as well move closer to that hazmat with his remaining one. Okay, so fire roll again. Uh, row six, column four is this smoke. So as I said earlier, uh, and I should probably should have gone and investigated that point of interest instead of coming in here. Um, um, 
because what happens now is because this is smoke this flips to fire whenever you've got fire with a point of interest you flip the point of interest over if it's a person they unfortunately are lost uh, the other bad thing is we've got a hot spot there so we need to roll again five three another hot spot that gets smoke roll again four six okay this is really bad <laughs> no, we get smoke there initially we get a hot spot there because there isn't one and that space was the result of rolling that space was the result of a hot spot now smoke to smoke next to fire turns to fire fire in a space where the hazmat causes an explosion right let's talk about explosions next to doors first when we get an explosion next to a door the door is removed from the game now when it's when the door's closed then you just remove the door if the door were open then the um, for a start this would have no actually no, it wouldn't have already been smoke um, if the door is open then not only is it removed but the fire spreads through the door as well um, but the door was closed so all that happens for the moment is the door is removed uh, now we know what happens when there's fire it moves to the next space there's a wall in the way so we get damage in this direction there's a wall in the way so we get damage in this direction the fire spreads and as I said earlier because we have fire in a space with a firefighter that firefighter is knocked down and moved to the nearest ambulance we then remove the explosion marker and the hotspot and then we turn again turn any smoke next to fire into fire and because this door is no longer here this becomes fire this is now next to fire so it also becomes fire and as you can see just smoke can be bad because you only need one bit of fire next to one bit of smoke in a large area of smoke and it just all goes to fire okay hazmat technicians turn done that was bad we've lost actually no correction uh, hazmat technicians turn is not complete because we've removed two uh, point of interest markers from the board the one we discovered was a blank and the one that unfortunately was a person that died in an explosion so we now roll to place two more points of interest um, row four column five now this is already on fire so we follow the marker on the board which is probably not very clear because it's blue on blue but it's pointing this way and then this one points down here then this one points along here and then along here and then here so this space is where we place the point of interest and we roll again for the second one and we get row two column five and can we place one there so 
Caps Firefighter. Uh, because I saved two from the last round, we have five generic action points. Which means we can do quite a lot this turn. Um, let's start by extinguishing some fire. I'm just going to turn this to smoke. I'm then going to fully extinguish this one. We're then going to move, and this is one of the saved APs, and then open the door, which costs a single um, action point to open the door. You just flip the token over. Um, I will then move into the kitchen, reveal this point of interest. It is a victim, so we want to try and rescue her. And then the remaining two I'll use to fully extinguish this fire. Okay, roll for fire. So, row one, column six, and we have another explosion. Right, open door here, so the fire spreads outside, um, we have an empty space there, we have damage there, that's on fire, so this gets a fire marker. Um, that's all those done. Then spaces that are smoke next to fire turn to fire. And then any fire that is outside the building just goes away. Um, and fortunately that was not too eventful. Although this whole quadrant is again looking pretty bad. However, it's the fire captain's turn, so let's start by firing the deck gun again and trying to roll a bit better. Two, four actions. Okay, row two, that's good. I like it being in row two. Column eight. That's not so great, however it will extinguish this, and that's fine. Uh, now for movement, um, the Cast Firefighter I think I definitely want to move. Um, one thing I want to just check in the rules is... Oh. I need to correct something. Where was the cast firefighter? He was there, wasn't he, when he was knocked down? Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah, actually, it's fine where it is. Um, What I what I just realised. What I was checking was whether not down um, firefighters can be commanded, and I don't see anything that says they can't. Uh, but what I realised was rather than moving into an ambulance, you actually move into one of the ambulance parking spaces, and it's whichever one is closest. But in this instance. Um, all these three were actually the same distance away, so 
I will choose to move them to the ambulance. Um, the, the reason for choosing a space with a vehicle on is that um, you can move the vehicle and any firefighters that are on the vehicle can choose to move with it, um, which I may do on his next turn. Um, and so yeah, but I can choose to move him. But I don't think I will do that. I'm going to move the Cavs firefighter. Now I could spend both his action points to move the victim with him, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to spend one to move him here, leaving the, the victim behind. Um, she's fairly safe in that corner, there isn't really much fire around her, and the idea is the cat's firefighter will extinguish all of this. And so that ends the fire captain's turn. We roll. Uh, so, row four, column seven, we get another explosion. Seems to be happening quite a lot. <laughs> um, so, uh, up and down, we have more damage. This direction we have smoke is going to turn to fire in this direction we have smoke and then they've turned to fire there's no more explosions no more smoke next to fire uh, we've still got three points of interest and so it's now the hazmat technician's turn What I was considering was moving the ambulance to this space um, so that he can get to this hazmat more quickly, but we've now got fire in the way. However, I think it's still worth doing that. So let's give him his four action points back. Now, the way moving a vehicle works is you spend two action points and you move the vehicle to the next space um, if you want you can spend four and move it to the opposite side of the board um, in this instance there's no point in doing that he will then uh, spend two as I said before when you're in a vehicle you're considered to be in either of the spaces the vehicle covers so he is in effect there or there um, he will then extinguish this fire completely that's his turn done and as you can see uh, once you get rolling with this game turns go really quickly uh, so Row one, column four, empty. That uh, smoke. Cast firefighter. Okay, he's back to three and three. So we want to put out some of this fire. Now, one thing to consider is if I want to keep on using the fire captain uh, to fire the deck gun. I don't want to move either of my um, other firefighters into this quadrant because if there is a firefighter in there you can't use the dead gun. So what I'm thinking is I will extinguish, as you know, I will turn this to smoke it then only costs a single action point to move it into this space I would then extinguish this completely and again I will save 
two action points for my next turn as the Cathay Fighter. So, end of his turn, roll on fire. Uh, row one, column four, it smokes, so it becomes fire. Done. Fire captain. Put his action points back. Now, what I'm considering doing is switching to a different role using the crew change um, action. This can only be done at the beginning of a turn and only if that firefighter is on the fire engine. Um, but it only costs two action points um, and it allows you to select any of the remaining um, specialists. So Yes, I think I will do that. I will spend my two to switch to the driver operator. Now, the command AP, they go away with the fire captain, but the driver operator gets any remaining action points. to use for the rest of the turn. Now, what's nice about the driver operator is that he can use the deck gun for two AP instead of four. So that is what I will now do. <coughs> he also has another nice ability which may come into effect in a moment. Let's have a look. So row four, column eight. So we start by flipping the red die to row three, which is column eight. So it's hitting this empty space, which means all we would do is extinguish that. Now what the driver operator can do is re-roll one or both of the dice once. They must choose one or the other, whether to, to do just one or both of them, and they must accept whatever result they get from the second uh, roll. Now, in this situation, in this column, or row rather, we have three fire in this quadrant. Any three of those are better than this one, so I will re-roll this. Now again, if I end up with a number that is over here, we flip the die and then choose whatever result that is. We got column seven, so it's here. It's not bad. It extinguishes these two fire markers. Um, what I was hoping for was to hit this one which would have extinguished all three of those. In fact it would have extinguished this one as well because there's a hole in this wall. But yeah, that is the uh, fire captain now driver operator. Um, it's turn done and we roll for fire and hope we don't get a bad result. So row four, column three, that's okay, that is just smoke and there's no hot spot. So hazmat technician, um, 
what I'm thinking is his task is pretty easy from this point. Get into here, put out this fire, get out. Now it does mean that the um, driver operator isn't going to be able to use the deck gun at that point. Um, but that's not too much of an issue because there isn't a huge amount of fire over here. But let's have a look at how many actions this is going to take. It's going to be one, two, three, and then four to move there. And that's his turn done. Okay. Row four, column seven. Smoke. It's next to fire, so it turns to fire. Done. Caps firefighter. Okay, we need to get him in, and now it doesn't matter if we move into this quadrant because the driver operator is not going to be using the dead gun because the hazmat technician is in that space. Let's start by moving for one. That's a saved one. Then we will turn this to smoke. Fully extinguish this one. Move. Turn this one to smoke. And that's another one. That's the second saved one. Fully extinguished this one. Two. And then do we move again or do we save that? I'm going to save it this time. So I've got an extra on his next turn. So let's see what the fire does. Column 3, row 5, that turns to fire and is a hot spot. So we roll again. 2, 1, that becomes a smoke and is a hot spot. So we roll again. 1, 4, that causes an explosion. Uh, so we get a damage cube, we get a destroyed door, we get smoke, smoke, and we get a hot spot on that space. Uh, we then do any smoke that is next to fire becomes fire. This one's okay because there's a wall in the way. This one's okay because there's a wall in the way. Um, so that was the caps fire fighters. Turn now the driver operator. Can't use the deck gun. So he is going to get off the fire engine for one. Extinguish that entirely for another one and then he's going to save one so. and fire five three that's an explosion So, damage, smoke, 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 a hot spot, so we go to roll again, one, eight, smoke, and it gets a hot spot marker, 
move that and now flip all of this to finer and back. And so yeah, driver operator done. Hazmat technician. Okay. He going to dispose of the hazmat so we're now completely clear of hazmat which means he, his ability is no longer very useful so we're going to move him once and then we're going to turn that into smoke for the remaining two actions and what I'm thinking with him is he will now move to the fire engine although I might be moving the fire engine. Although that's not going to happen yet. He will be able to go one, two, three, four. Yeah, I like that. That's fine. So, end his turn. Uh, go to column three so that becomes fire. So, done. Cast firefighter. Okay, I think what I'm going to do with him is I'm going to move him. Well, let's start by let's get rid of the smoke. Let's then use his saved arm to move there. And then let's get rid of this smoke. Uh, we will then use another one to get rid of this smoke. You will move in through the hole and into here for two. Find out it's the dog. Now there's no point in him using his last uh, action point um, to turn either of these to smoke because they will just turn straight back to fire. So he will save that. And let's roll fire. So, row six, call three, another explosion. Okay, these explosions are getting out of hand. We need to do something about this. Uh, no damage there. Okay, that's bad. It comes off. That wasn't a hot spot, so that's fine. That turns to fire. That turns to fire. Now, because that's a hole, this turns to fire and this turns to fire. That one goes away. And we move on to the driver operator. Okay, he has five actions. Now, see, one, two, three, four, five, yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him in for one. I have him fully extinguished that for two. And then I'll move out for one, two more and get on the fire engine. And that's his turn done. And um, all my thinking there is that on the next turn for the hazmat technician I will be bringing him out onto the fire engine and that's one two three four actions and that's all he's going to do the reason for doing that is on the next driver operators uh, turn I'm going to move the fire engine over here and then the hazmat technician will change role um, I am not certain what I'm going to go for at this moment, but we'll see. 
what the board state is like at that point. Uh, so, oh, of course, <laughs> row one, column seven, starts to smoke, it's a hot spot. We roll again. Row two, column two, that's smoke, it gets the last hot spot. So now, because all the hotspot markers have gone, we no longer need to place those on the board. But there are now, I think it's 12 of them. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Yeah, 12 on the board. So there's a good chance that we will roll them. Um, actually, is it more than that? No, it's more than that. It's 15, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 14. Um, so yeah, it's a high probability of rolling space with a hot spot. Uh, which I just did, so I need to do that. Roll again. Um, row 3, column 8. That's uh, okay, that's just smoke. This turns to fire, this turns to fire. No other. Oh no, we've got smoke next to fire there. I probably had that at the end of the last round and didn't notice it. Oh well. Anyway, hazmat technician. One, two, three, four. Onto there. And we've got to hope that not too much bad happens. Um, we need to start getting these victims out at this point, getting them rescued. Uh, the way we rescue them is we take them to the ambulance. And as I said, I need seven of them. And the fire is getting out of hand, so this is not good. But it's the cast fire fighter's turn, so he can start putting some of this fire out. So let's start with full extinguish here. A full extinguish using a saved one there. We'll then move and then fully extinguish that one. Done. Okay. Row four, column five. Okay, that's smoke. It turns straight to fire. Driver operator. Oh, we should have. Uh, Got rid of one of those, must have been a saved one last time. So we'll use all four of his to move one, two, roll for fire, two, five. Fortunately, that is only smoke. Hazmat technician. Okay. So we're going to use two of his action points to change roles. Now, the ones I'm considering are the rescue specialist the paramedic and the generalist um, the, the rescue specialist has three free movement 
exclamation point is what you're looking for to come out. Um, she can also uh, chop through walls, which I haven't explained. Um, you can deliberately put damage markers on the board. Um, in this situation, we're getting new low on damage cubes. Um, it that normally costs two action points, but the uh, rescue specialist can do it for one action point. Now she's got a downside is in that um, she pays double action points to extinguish fire and smoke. So to turn a fire into uh, or to fully extinguish a fire, it's four action points, which is all her basic action points. Now she does still have three free movement, um, but it, it does limit her a lot. And obviously to turn smoke, um, either fire into smoke or to remove smoke is two action points. So yes, she's not the best at fighting fire. Um, the paramedic has the same uh, limitation on fighting fire. Uh, but she can treat uh, victims um, and basically place um, one of these um, heel markers underneath the victim and then rather than costing two action points to move a firefighter with a victim it just costs one so it's like moving as normal and the victim just follows you because they're no longer unconscious. Um, or the generalist has five action points, uh, which would mean that we now have three um, left, which could be quite useful. Um, Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the generalist. And you'll see why in a second. So, swap the roll cards. Now he gets his fifth action point. Um, and he will spend one to move to an ambulance space there. And then use those two to call the ambulance. Uh, because what I want to do is actually bring him back round to this side, um, get him in and try and get these victims out to the ambulance quickly. Um, or he may even come round here and get that one out. We'll see, depends on what the fire does. Speaking of which, it's now time to roll the dice again. So four and eight, that's a smoke. Cast firefighter. Uh, deal back to three and three. Okay, I'm going to spend one to get rid of that smoke. And then one, two to move. Two to extinguish that, and then save one. So, row five, column four. Okay, I don't like that. Uh, so, the explosion rips through the door, gets rid of that, passes all the way along to here. Uh, that direction we get damage, this direction we get, um, and at this point I'm just going to start placing fire when it's in a space that's obviously going to become fire. And now we move on to the driver operator. This area is full of fire and 
completely devoid of firefighters, so we will use the deck gun. And we should now see just how good the deck gun is. Okay, row one, column two. So the uh, column die is fine, the row die needs to be flipped and so it hits there and yeah we will keep that get rid of those four and that was just two extra points for him so he will do that again and as you can see the, the driver operator is extremely useful um, he's one of my favorite rolls okay so column one row six we're sort of in the right area but we really want it to be over here somewhere so I'm going to reroll both of them and hope for the best so column one uh, is going to end up in exactly the same space again uh, because it, it was 1-1 one, one. we flipped the red die to a 6 and what it does is extinguish that that's not too bad. We got rid of five uh, fire markers. Okay, end of his turn. Roll to see what the fire does. So, row six, column two, one of the ones he just put out, comes back to smoke. Okay, the generalist now. Where do we want to move him? I think we'll move him here. She is in danger. We need to get to her fast. Yep, so two actions to move the ambulance around. Then Okay, I'm going to take a risk, big risk. One, two, three. But we need to start taking risks because we need to start getting people out. Cast firefighter. Uh, and also, we're on the right side of the board so that the driver operator can still use his um, deck gun. So we're okay with that. Um, so yeah, end of the generous turn. Roll for fire. We get row three, column two. <laughs> that's, that's not great. So that becomes fire. Uh, fortunately, it's the cast firefighter's turn, and he's got a saved AP. So we will use that saved one to move. We'll use to extinguish to get rid of that. One normal to move. A normal and an extinguish to get rid of that. And then the remaining one to make that smoke. Okay. Row three, con two again. At least it's only smoke. Um, now the driver operator still worth using is using the deck gun because there's uh, one, two, three, four, five spaces that are worth hitting. Um, in fact, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, in fact all of them are worth hitting. The, there are five that are really good. Uh, this one would be ideal because that would get rid of actually five fire. So let's see what we can do. So 
row five, I like that. Uh, column eight, so we need to flip that and it becomes a three. Now, do we keep that? I think I probably should keep that. That's not a bad roll. That's three fire extinguished. Um, could have gone for re-rolling that, but in that column, most of the um, spaces were actually worse. Um, so that cost two action points. He'll spend his remaining two to do the same again, and hopefully hit here this time. <laughs> Uh, okay, the column is the right column. The that is there now. In this instance, I actually want to re-roll the red die because two out of three are a better space. So let's do that, and we get a three. So that needs to flip to a four. So that hits here extinguishes all of those. That's brilliant. It's actually really good. And so end of his turn we spread the fire. So six four explosion of course. There's my explosion marker there. And it's a hot spot so we will roll again we just won't place another hot spot marker. Um, so left hand direction, door gets destroyed, um, this will become uh, fire, but we can do that in a moment. That's on fire, that's on fire, we get another damage cube. This is possibly what's going to cause the end of the game. Need to re-roll because of the hot spot. Six, four, same space again. Okay, that is really bad um, because that and that and that and that, and then we move on again. Okay, hopefully that's better. No, it's just smoke. Right now, it goes away. These all turn to fire. Including this one where there's a person, so they die. This goes away. Now we have to roll again to replace the point of interest. So three, two, um, it's not on not on fire but it has smoke and you can place a POI on smoke. Okay. Generalist. Five actions. What is he going to do now? He needs to get people out. And he can do that. Uh, so has to carry the victim because it's not treated. So that takes two action points to move there. Now this flips over its blank. So we'll spend two more to move her there. We'll save this one. End of his turn. Let's see what happens. Uh, two, eight, that is a hot spot. I'll make that smoke at the moment. Uh, three, eight, that becomes fire. It's not a hot spot. Then we get flash over. Uh, then we have to add a point of interest. So two, Five and we get a second point of interest there. OK, 
Okay, Caps Firefighter. Extinguish, extinguish for two of those. Then he'll move twice to there and he will extinguish that one just to make sure that <laughs> that's all nice and safe. And then it will save his last action point. Okay. Three, six. That just has smoke on it. Uh, we move to the, the driver operator. Um, yeah, I think it's still worth. Oh uh, no, I now can't use deck gun because of him. Should I move to this way? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Five, but uh, it's debatable. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. As I can at least use the deck on once. So, two actions to move to there, then two actions to use the deck gun. Okay, row four. That's okay. Column one is not. It becomes a six. Um, that is not a good place. So I'm going to reroll both of them, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to reroll both of them. So row three, column two, they both need to flip over. That becomes a four. That becomes a five. Uh, so we put out one space. Not the best. So end of turn. And we get three, four. That's smoke. So generalist. Now has six actions because the other one's saved. So two move the victim onto the ambulance. And that's rescued now. Now we only need six more <laughs> without losing two more. He'll use two to move the ambulance round here. And then who to run like his picture into the building? Uh, okay, and put back the safe on. See what the fire does. So, row three, column eight, we get an explosion. So we've got one, two damage, three damage, that door disappears, that returns to fire. Uh, then we need a point of interest, four, three. Okay. Great. Uh, that's not too bad. Let's do gas firefighter next. He's going to move for the saved one. Move for the non saved one. Uh, move again. Find that same person. Move again. Extinguish that and then stay there. Um, I could have extinguished, extinguished that on my three, but 
Uh, I'm not worried about that now. So, can't save that. So we just roll the dice and see what happens. Bad stuff as usual probably. Uh, actually that's not too bad. That's just smoke. Driver operator. Mm, yeah, I think deck gun twice is his best move at this point. Uh, so, con seven, six. That's okay. We'll get rid of those. And then again. Uh, so two, we need to flip that. Five is within the quadrant, so it's there. Uh, yeah, I've got a very low chance of getting somewhere better than that. So yeah, let's do that. Those two go. That's his turn done. We see what the five does. Uh, six and six. So six, six. Just right, we've got a hot spot. Three, two, that becomes smoke. And now we move on to the Cavs firefighter. And let's see. Uh, what are we going to do here? Need to extinguish and yeah, so one, two to extinguish there, one normal to move there, then one and one to extinguish there, and that would mean one to turn that to smoke. And I roll for fire. Two, three is. I just did that in the wrong order, didn't I? I should have done the generalist. Because I did the driver operator then the cast firefighter. So, what I will do, I'm not going to unwind that. I will just do the generalist, then the driver operator, and then back to the generalist. And uh, I think that's probably the best way to correct that. So, generalist will move or the or okay. So let's start by rescuing the dog. Or He's starting to rescue the dog. Move in. Um, he's going to extinguish that and then with the remaining one move back into there. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to move them like one square at a time, try and rescue them both uh, as quick as possible rather than leaving one in danger somewhere. Okay, so. One, one, that's smoke, and that's okay. Uh, so now we go to the driver operator. Uh, driver operator is going to. Mm, and she, are they going to extinguish? We think what we might do is switch it up. I'm thinking we've got the fire mostly under control at this point. Yeah, he's going to switch roles to the paramedic. And as I said before, she can treat victims 
Um, she's then going to move the fire engine round to here. So she's closer to these. Um, yeah, that will do with that. So let's get the fire going. Uh, two, six. So that's going to be fire. The generalist again. Um, so two to carry her. Uh, then I'm going to go one and fully extinguish that um, because I want the medic to come in, treat them to get them out quicker. Okay, spread fire. Uh, five, four, that's just smoke, that's okay. Cast firefighter. Uh, let's go extinguish, move, extinguish, save one. Um, three, two, that comes fire, paramedic, so she's got four basic and three heals, so she's going to go one, two, three, so that uses three of those, now treatment, these are not um, free action points, um, the uh, treat ability uses uh, normal actions. These markers just go on the board underneath the uh, victim. So she will use the remaining action to treat the woman and that will make her a lot easier to move in subsequent turns. Okay. Five, three, that's a hot spot, but it's just smoke for the moment. Hopefully it's going to stay that way. Uh, two, eight, that's bad, that's an explosion, and it's a hot spot. Uh, we're getting really dangerously low on cubes now. So that's a cube there, that's a cube there, that's a cube up there. Uh, that's fire there, and we need to roll again. So six, seven. That's just a smoke, and that's fine. Okay, generalist has five actions. Is going to go one, two, three, four, five. And roll the dice. Uh, so five, seven, smoke, and the treat mark goes back, she's rescued, we roll for the PLI, uh, 6, 7, so there, there, that's okay, uh, that was the generalist, wasn't it, cast firefighter, he is now in completely the wrong place. Okay, I'm going to have to move him through as quickly as I can to get over to the other side. Go on, save. Okay, I might even ignore all this smoke. Yeah, let's do that. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. Oh no, he's only got. What was it? Was he there? One, two, three. Wait, I think he was there, wasn't he? Uh, so one, two, three extinguish. Three, four, three extinguish, three extinguish. Actually, that one. Uh, uh, I think that was correct, wasn't it? <laughs> if I did that wrong, you can moan at me in the comments. Um, I have a feeling I put him back in the wrong place and I may have moved a smoke marker on the way through or something. Oh, I got rid of that smoke, didn't I? I think that's correct. Apologies if that is wrong. Um, that's his turn done. So, four and one, that's smoke. Paramedic, she gets her actions back. Uh, she's probably going to start by treating the dog. And then she will move one, two, and then if this is a person, it is treat that person. Uh, roll the dice. Two, four, that is just smoke, and I think that should be there. So, as a paramedic generalist, he's going to rescue the dog. So, one, two, dog is rescued. Paramedic gets her marker back. Um, so that was two actions, and he's going to go three, four, five. Because it's all about rescuing people at this point. Okay, so fire, six, five, smoke there, not a hot spot. We need a POI, uh, two, one, that's okay, not too bad. Okay, firefighter, uh, he must have used a save on last time. Probably his best, yeah. One, two, three, that is normal AP. I use two extinguish to get rid of this one. Yeah, I think that's the better one. Okay, let's roll. Uh, four, one, that comes via a hot spot. That's good. Paramedic. Um, I think she will move to the next victim. She, I'm missing. No, I'm not. Yeah, she will move to the next victim. One, two, three, and treat. Fourth. Roll the dice. Two, three, that becomes fire. Not a hot spot, that's good. Generalist. Got 
five options. I think you can get her out with five. Let's see, so one, two, three, four, and five. Hey, four rescued. Paramedic gets her marker back and we roll. So two seven, that's an explosion. And oh <laughs> we're dangerously close. We have one <laughs> damage cube left because one two on there. Uh we get fire there and fire there. And I know that that was there and that was there, so not a hot spot. <sighs> okay. Uh, that was the generalist. We need a, another point of interest. Um, three, one, over here. And okay, gas firefighter. What are you going to do? I think I think fairly straightforward, really. Extinguish, move. Extinguish, save one. Okay. So three, six. Okay, that's going to become fire. That's all that happens there. And we move on to the paramedic who actually going to do some firefighting. She's going to move one with the victim. No, no, she can't do that. No, she can do that. It's a risk, it's a big risk, but we're going to do it. We're going to move one with the victim. That's one action point. Now she's going to spend two action points to turn that to smoke. And then she's going to spend her last one to move into that space with the victim. It's risky. If this, if I end up rolling that, then um, it's bad. <laughs> Four, six, I don't mind that. That's fire near the cast firefighter. Um, four, that was a hot spot. And so we roll again. Two, five, that was uncomfortably close. <laughs> okay, generalist turn. Um, he needs to move the ambulance. So we'll do that, two actions, bring it around here, and then he will move in and see, uh, it's a blank, so he'll move again, uh, yeah, move here, that's a person, um, so he will extinguish that with his last one. Okay. And I'm kind of close to the end of the game here. Um, so either going to 
I think the building's going to collapse or we're going to get everybody out. Uh, we need another point of interest because one on that one was blank. Oh, that's a horrible place for it to be. It's right over here. We may have to just ignore that one, which is not a nice thing to have to want to do, but we are running out of time. Okay, cast fire fighter. Okay, extinguish. Move with his saved one. Then it's going to extinguish twice. And I think I'm going to do this one and this one. Or actually, no, this one. Because if this one explodes, it'll place the last damage cube. Whereas this one explodes, it's just going to place fire. No damage cubes. So that's okay. Right. Roll for fire. Uh, two, eight. <laughs> it explodes. So we get fire here. Unfortunately, we get fire there and on our caps firefighter and fire there. So he goes to the nearest ambulance space. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, I think we'll go here. We get the choice when it's equal distance. So that then goes away. That was a hot spot. Oh. Um, so strictly speaking, these should be smoke. Um, two, six. Smoke, it's a hot spot. Uh, three, five, that is a hot spot. Three, four, okay. Now all is turn. Fire. That's everything. These two go away. And that was a cast fire for it, wasn't it? Yes. Paramedic. Ah. Uh, just four. So she's going to go. One, two, three, four. Rescuing our fifth person and being ready to treat that one. Um, actually, no, she's going to stay on there. Uh, yeah, because mm. he's going to drag it, him out. So yeah, she'll save two, and we'll see next time what she wants to do. Okay. So three and six, and that's game over because we get an explosion here, um, and we need two cubes. We've only got one left. Um, there would have been also fire and fire there. Uh, but yeah, we needed a cube on here as well. And that is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Um, yeah, the run out of damage cubes, so the building collapsed, and that's that. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Um, I would be very pleased if you would 
subscribe to my channel and share this video. Um, this is the, the first in what I hope to be an ongoing series of videos on Flashpoint. Um, I intend to do a number of other single playthroughs like this with other games. Um, they will all be solo playable games. Um, So campaign play for a number of games and um, uh, first play games which even the, the timing of when it's going to arrive I think is probably going to be Clans of Caledonia so look forward to that. Okay, thank you again and I'll see you next time.